there. Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug, and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Asveen P36 Titanium Piston Filler. Asveen, Moon Man, Mad John, whatever you want to call them, they've been creating some very nice fountain pens lately, and when I saw this Titanium Piston Filler, I had to check it out. Check it out with me right now. And we have another unknown package from China. But I kind of know what this might be. I think it's another Asvine. We'll see. Let's open it up. This is from Easy Buy from Sally. Facebook. Amazon. Okay, I didn't buy this from Amazon, but that's interesting. I see an A. I see an S. And it's another box from Asvine. I'm practicing saying that as vine. How'd you ask him? I say on the cheese. What do you say? On the, on ah, the. For Christ's sake. Here we have our Moon Man box with the as vine stamp in it, the as vine booklet, which is becoming as sophisticated and as nicely printed as the Moon Man. In fact, they're the same colors. Probably came from the same printers. Certainly the same diagrams as the Moon Man pamphlet. And here's the pen. This is the Asvine P36 piston filler, and it's in titanium. And it feels like titanium. And that acrylic, clear acrylic, is very solid and very nice in the Moon Man tradition. Ooh, that's a nice section. Is it slick? Well, those threads have a bit of a bite to them and a little bit of a grip. Interesting. It's not as slick as aluminum would be or steel would be. And here's a difference. This one has a Bach nib on it. That's why this was so expensive relatively. Makes for a very long pen, but it does post. Can you turn that piston? Yes. So I do not recommend this. And that Asvine piston will take that same Wing Sung 699 wrench that I have, or the um, if you have a narwhal, the narwhal wrench will work on that piston as well. It's the same parts basically. So I'll be interested to ink this pen up and put it through its paces. It's surprisingly light for its looks, and it's quite lovely. The Asvine P36 Titanium Piston Filler. I will show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I've got a bunch of Asveen pens now. Here they are in their order of production. My first one was this skeleton pattern, and this is the vacuum filler, the Asveen V169. Then came the P20 piston filler in this purple swirl. There were four colors in the swirly version, and then they came out with galaxy and amber. And of course I had to have them both. I just fell in love with both of these piston fillers. Beautiful pens, the P20. They are awesome pens and they rival my Moonman M800 and my beloved Leonardo Memento Zero Blue Hawaii. And then Asveen came out with the P30, uh, which is relatively lighter than the V169 was. This one was 55 grams. This one only weighs in at 46 grams. It's still pretty heavy for me. This was their first cigar-shaped pen, and it is a piston filler, and it's done in this antique brass kind of finish. Then Asveen provided me with a blue vacuum filler, this V126, and I gave that away to a subscriber uh, during my 10,000 subscribers uh, celebration. And I quickly bought another one to replace it because I liked it so much. And I got a second one in this uh, frosted version. Beautiful pens. So when Sally at Easy Buy on Etsy announced this new Asveen P36 titanium, I figured it was the same pen as the P30, but with a titanium finish rather than this brass type finish. But as you can see, the P36 is not the same pen with different materials. 
it's a completely different design with a different clip, a different section, and it's thicker and a longer pen as well. And I was anxious to see how heavy this pen was, expecting it to be lighter because of the titanium, and I was correct. The P36 is a full 14 grams lighter than the P30. From the top, we see the bullet-shaped titanium finial, which is screwed on top of the clear acrylic cap and holds the titanium clip in place. This top finial actually comes off fairly easily, so it's easy to line up the clip with the orientation of the nib, if that kind of thing is important to you, for you OCD types like me. So the first thing I think when I look at this house is not enough front doors. And before you ask, this is in no way related to any OCD compulsion I have about needing doors to correspond to each weekday. Now, let's go buy some doors and big hammers. Five front doors. The clip is very springy and very usable and is a nice, elegant shape. And this brushed aluminum is very, very nice. One of the things that I really like about it is that it doesn't show any fingerprints at all. The solid and very clear acrylic cap tapers up to a titanium cap band which has Asveen on the front and P36, the model number, on the back, laser etched into that band. The acrylic continues and then tapers down a little bit to the barrel, which is straight to about here, and it tapers just slightly towards the bullet shape end finial and piston knob. The cap unscrews with one, two full rotations to reveal the concave titanium section and number six size Bach steel broad nib and black plastic feed. The section is very comfortable and these threads here aren't sharp but do provide some traction for my thumb. And it looks like that section might be slippery but it's actually not. That brushed titanium has a bit of grip to it and especially with those threads this is very comfortable in the hand and does not slip at all. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It's a generic Bach number no. 6 steel nib with the typical scroll work the Bach logo, and Bach roll stamped into it. And there are no markings to show the line size of the nib. The nib and feet are not part of a nib assembly, but are friction fit into that section. And the section is not removable. The inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into it, and that lines up with the section which you can see demonstrated through the cap. The cap does go on the end of that piston knob, but not securely, and makes the pen ridiculously long and back-weighted. Furthermore, that cap resting on that knob allows you to turn the cap and turn that knob, and you'll have an inky mess in your lap. So posting is not recommended. Fortunately, the pen is plenty long enough and very comfortable in the hand unposted. I bought this pen on Etsy from Sally's Easy Buy for $56 US. The pen is available with three Asveen nib options, EF, F, and M, and four Bach nib options, EF, F, M, and Broad. The P36 with the Asveen nib is $45. Before I show some size comparisons, let's see how to take this pen apart. So it's easier to take the pen apart when it isn't full of ink. So I thought I'd take it apart first and then ink it up. But we can take the nib unit out. Maybe we can't. Nope, it's friction fit. So let's give it a pull. There. So there's the Bach nib unit and the plastic feed. And that's surprising that that, that's not a nib unit. But it was fairly easy to pull that nib. So let's extend the piston. And we can use either the Wingsung 699 wrench, which fits right on there, or we can use the wrench that comes with a narwhal because they are the same piston unit. So I'm going to put the wrench on there and screw it down so that it screws down on the wrench. And it should be a reverse thread. There it is. Righty loosey, lefty tighty, and it should pull right out. It's exactly the same as the other Asvine. Uh, piston unit and exactly the same as the narwhal piston unit and the moon man piston unit as well and there's our acrylic barrel easy to clean in that state you don't need to take this piston unit apart any further than this i recommend you don't because it becomes a bit of a trial and error to get it back together again correctly this is also one thing you have to watch out for is that ring comes off. I'd be tempted to glue that back on the end of the barrel, 
but because that's acrylic you'll be able to see that glue in there so just make sure you have it back on the unit and with that little slot so it fits in the end of the barrel pointing towards the nib just like that and then you can put the unit back and give it a reverse turn make sure that ring sits down against the end of the barrel and make it hand tight only then line the feed up with where the the feed will touch the edges of that nib hold on to the nib and the feed at that point put some rubber mat on the shoulders and give it a nice firm push to make it seated proper and there you go just push that piston up until all that air is out and you get a little bit of ink showing the feed and then I can put it back into the bottle and draw that piston back up again and that way you get the fullest fill you can so I measured the pen when it was empty and it was 30.26 grams so now that the pen is full measured again and we have 32.07 and that gives us 1.81 milliliters of ink that's a lot this is the first writing with this as vine t 36 and i purchased it as a broad steel number six block nib pretty wet has a bit of scratch both horizontal ways not much line variation very stiff lots of feedback but it is a nice wet line i think i'll probably polish some of that feedback out of there because it borders on scratchiness now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the asveen p36 titanium piston filler with an asveen p30 piston filler an asveen v126 vacuum filler an asveen p20 piston filler and a mad john s7 japanese eyedropper now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see that the two piston fillers the p36 and the p30 aren't recommended for posting because they post right on that piston knob the v126 posts very nicely indeed as does the p20 which becomes slightly longer than the vacuum filler and the japanese eyedropper doesn't post either now let's look at them all unposted and here are all of them unposted now let's look at some size comparisons and i'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review and this is claire fontaine 90 gsm paper and this is the as veen i'm getting better at saying that p36 titanium piston filler and it has a number six size bach steel broad nib And the ink today is J. Urbain Shogun. Let's check the wetness. <laughs> Nicely wet. And Shogun is a lovely color. It's a deep charcoal gray uh, that has a copper shimmer to it. It's one of my favorite black inks. Well, gray inks and this nib is very smooth with a good amount of feedback it wasn't like this out of the box however it was the nib had feedback that was bordering on scratchy so I gave it a bit of micro mesh 8000 and uh, polished it up with the 12,000 grit uh, just a few figure eights like that and it is now 
very nice indeed. It's nicely wet and a nice nib. But it did need some tweaking right out of the box. And here are some close matches to the J. Urbain Shogun from Inkswatch.com. And as to some line variation, well, you can push it, but this is a very stiff nib. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.8 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western broad or a Japanese broad plus on my Richard Bender line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's a lot drier, a lot thinner, but it actually does it. And for some quick writing, That feed has no difficulty keeping up whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this fountain pen. The pen is extremely well built with quality materials and top-notch fit and finish. I like the aesthetic of the brushed titanium and the clear acrylic. The lines of the pen are very, very handsome indeed. And it's very nicely balanced. It's a big pen, but because of that titanium, is fairly light in the hand unposted. That metal section has some grip to it, which is good. And those threads aren't sharp, but they actually aid in your grip. So I never feel like this pen is going to slip out of my hand. I like this pen better than the P30 because of the reduced weight of the titanium. And the ink capacity is a huge 1.8 milliliters. But there are some issues as well. The cap posts on top of the piston knob, which is a very bad thing. So I don't consider this pen a poster at all. And the Bach nib makes the pen $10 more expensive than the Asveen branded nib, but it's the only way to get a broad nib. Or if you are okay with an extra fine, fine, or medium nibs, I don't see any difference in quality between the Bach and the Asveen nibs. Actually, the Asveen nibs have needed no extra tuning after taking them out of the box for me whereas this Bach did. So the Asveen nibs might be considered the better, less expensive alternative. At $45, I do consider this pen to be a reasonable price for what you're getting. It is titanium and lovely thick acrylic. And even though the nib and the feed are not part of a removable nib assembly, pulling that nib and feed out of there is fairly simple. And that's a fairly standard number six size Bach nib. So you'll be able to replace that with a Yovo if you want, or with any number six size standard nib. I've swapped this nib out and put in one of my Kaigalu long knife or long blade uh, calligraphy style nibs, and it works very nicely. So with all that incapacity, you might want to get a more interesting nib than that Bach. But overall, kudos to Asveen for another extremely well-designed and well-built fountain pen. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I am now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.